Go ahead. Happy Easter. It is so good to see you. And I hope that you're as excited about Easter as I am. Please quickly get your Bibles out with me to Matthew chapter 28. Yes, we're still in Matthew, right? If you're with us normally, we're going through a series uh, through the gospel of Matthew. It's we've, we've been at least 10 years uh, through this, this series through Matthew. And we're going to still be in it today because the Lord is good, all right? And so while you're getting your Bibles out, getting ready for Matthew chapter 20, get your message notes out. While you're doing that, I want to tell you about two things. First of all, can we just celebrate our student pastor, Pastor Derek? Didn't he do a great job? Wasn't that wonderful? He is so good. Absolutely amazing. We love our students and our student pastor around here. And I was just, I just go and tell you, I can't do that. That's amazing. That's, it's just a wonderful chance to celebrate. Uh, also, if you wouldn't mind looking inside your worship guide, you've got your message notes, but also you've got this thing we do once a year called our annual survey. And we ask everybody to take, it takes like three minutes to fill it out. But about three minutes, everybody, whether you're a first time guest or you've been part of our church for a while now, we ask you to fill it out because it lets us make sure that we have all the updated information so that we can serve you the best. Also, it lets us know how we can best be praying for you during this season of your life. And then also, on the very back, you see a spiritual survey that we do together every year as a church, as a chance just to celebrate what the Lord is doing. And so at some point before we end our service today, I want you to fill that out and there'll be a place in the back as you walk out where you can put that uh, there and we'll be so grateful to celebrate that with you. And uh, I love this time of the year. I love Easter Sunday. I think it's amazing. I think it's awesome. And we're gonna celebrate the very first Easter Sunday today. It's what the text we're going to be reading. And I wanna tell you, I can't imagine what it must have been like on that first Easter Sunday morning. I have no idea. I think it's impossible to, to, to think about what that was like. But I heard someone tell a story recently that kind of reminded me, maybe a lot less so, but, but kind of what it must have been like. And it was this guy who was telling the story. And he said that, you know, he worked at this place. He'd been there for like 20 years. And he just absolutely loved his job. I mean, it was just great. He loved going to work every day. But he said, after COVID, a lot of things changed about his job. And so people were going online and, and other things were moving. And so slowly but surely, a lot of people around him started getting laid off, started losing their jobs. And it was people over here and people over there. And, and he still had his, but it just seemed like everybody was just disappearing. And so he kept wondering, <laughs> was he going to be next? And he said, one Friday afternoon, just about quitting time, his boss came up to him and he said, hey, first thing Monday morning, I need to see you in my office. Kind of say, if you're a boss in here, don't do that. That just immediately means all weekend's gonna be horrible, right? And, and so he was kind of the same way. He was like, wait a minute, can we talk right now? Nope, nope, it's, it needs to wait till Monday morning. Well, he said he had the worst weekend of his life. He said he went through all the stages of grief. I mean, he's like, he said yeah, he was sad and then he was angry, then he was pleading and then he was just hysterical. He's like, he said he had the full range of emotions on Saturday and Sunday. And he said, finally, as he got ready to head to work on Monday morning, he said, I was just literally just exhausted and terrified. I said, I just didn't know. I, I'd worried myself sick all weekend long. And he said, I just, I just knew he was gonna let me go. I, I knew the worst case was gonna happen. I don't know how I'm gonna support my family. He said, it was just the most devastating thing ever. And so he just kind of drug himself into his boss's office. And he said, while he was there, his boss was on the phone. So he had a chance just to kind of sit there and marinate in his sorrow for a moment, you know. And he said, the boss hung up the phone and he's like, hey, I just need to tell you something. Here it comes. We just really love you around here. Oh, okay. That's how this is going to begin. Appreciate that. You know, and he said, no, no, you don't understand. We, we just, we love what you're doing. And we just wanted to let you know that we're going to give you a promotion. Wait, what? And th the phone call was what I was waiting on. We're actually going to double your salary as well. Wait a minute. Can you say that again? Is it? I mean, yeah, we, we love you. Do you not notice that we love you? So we're going to give you a promotion. You're going to get, he said it took him like three days for it to sink in. It's like, so I'm not getting fired. No, you're getting a promotion and double the money. And he was like, he had so convinced himself that it was all over with that when it became time to celebrate, he didn't know what to do with that. He was like, yay, yay. This is the, this is the response. And he said it was simultaneously one of like the most whiplash he'd ever had emotionally because he went from having the worst day of his life that his whole career was over to not having the best day of his life. And he said, it's almost impossible to explain to you the difference of emotion that happened. Well, much more so than that is how, in my mind, it had to be for the very first people on Easter Sunday morning. And so I want us to read this together today and just celebrate what this day represents. And so if you got your Bibles, Matthew 28, you can look on the screen with me. The Bible says this, it says early Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. 
Suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone and sat on it. And his face shone like lightning and his clothes was white as snow. The guards shook with fear as they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women, don't be afraid. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. Guess what? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Just as he said it would happen. Maybe a slight attitude when he said that. He was like, you know, he did kind of tell you like a thousand times, but come and see where his body was laying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, I love this, Jesus met them and he greeted them. And they ran to him, grasping his feet and worshiped him. And then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Look at your neighbor again and say, still, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The first thing he said, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. Wow, what an amazing moment that really words cannot adequately describe. But in that is one of the things I love so much about Easter. And so I'm just gonna kind of celebrate with you today as we celebrate Easter together. And if you're taking notes, here's kind of the big idea I hope you get with me today. And that is that because of the resurrection, Jesus has turned our fear into joy. Because of the resurrection, Jesus has turned our fear into joy. And can I tell you, that just blows my mind when I think about it because the, these poor ladies, I mean, you imagine the, just all of the emotional roller coaster. I mean, just a few days on Friday before that, they saw Jesus nailed to a cross. They saw him yell out, it is finished and die. They, to make sure he was dead, a soldier stabbed him into the heart with a spear to make sure that he had expired. They took him off the cross. They watched, they watched them take Jesus' body to a borrowed tomb by a guy whose name was Joseph from Arimathea. And then they wept and they cried and they wondered and they thought, I thought Jesus was the son of God. And then in a moment, an angel came and turned all of those things upside down. Everything changed in a moment. And the message that the angels gave to these ladies, and then, he, then they said, go tell the disciples, to later would go tell everybody else, is the same joy that we have today. And I'm gonna tell you some of the reasons why I love Easter so much. And then when we finish, we're gonna have an opportunity to worship. And I wonder what you're gonna celebrate the most about Easter today. And so if you're taking notes, here's three reasons why I love Easter and why it turns our fear into joy. And here's the first one. And that is that the resurrection brings joy because we can know that Jesus is alive. That we can know that Jesus is alive. And the truth of the resurrection changes everything. I want you to look at your neighbor and say it with as much kindness and tenderness as you have. Now listen, don't be afraid. That's too loud. That's too loud. You can't do it that loud. You gotta, you gotta be sweet about it. You gotta be, hey, listen, don't be afraid. You're actually not talking now. Okay, I get it. I get it. Okay, yes. But don't, don't be afraid. Don't, don't be afraid. Why? Why do, you, why do we not need to be afraid? You know why? Because Jesus is alive. Look what the Bible says. It says, early on Sunday morning. By the way, do you know why as a church we worship on Sunday morning? It's because it was the morning when Jesus rose from the dead. That's why we worship on Sunday. It was a new day dawning. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Everybody's name was Mary, apparently, back in the first century. Okay, everybody, all the Marys went to the tomb, and then some amazing things happened. An earthquake happened. And then all the guards were terrified because an angel showed up. And then, I love this, the angel sat down on the rock after he moved and was like, sup, <laughs> that's an amazing angel. He's like, hey, it's cool, it's all fine. And then the angel spoke to them. And the first thing was, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Do you notice in the Bible, almost every time a person sees an angel, the first thing they say is, don't be afraid. You know why? Because angels are terrifying, okay? Look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. And if you see an angel, 
try not to run, okay? Like, I hear people say all the time, I wanna see an angel, not me, okay? I am perfectly content knowing they're there and seeing them when we get to heaven because apparently jokers be terrifying, okay? But he said, don't be afraid, get up off the floor, get up, get up, you know. I know who you are looking for, you're looking for Jesus, he was crucified, he's not here. He's risen from the dead, just as he said it would happen. I love this, come see where his body was lying. You know what I love so much about Jesus? What I love so much about God is that God knows us. And he knows that to believe something so fantastic, to believe something so amazing, that Jesus had rose from the dead, the first thing he said was, let me prove it to you. Let me show you. Let me show you what's going on. One of the things I love about Christianity so much is it is not a religion of blind faith. It is not where you just have to believe and hope for the best. Yes, at some point you do have to take a step of faith, but it is nowhere near as big a step as some people would like to tell you. Jesus has proven himself over and over and over again. And I wanna tell you on behalf of every pastor that's ever talked to you, I am sorry that we don't tell you enough that Jesus rose from the dead and I can prove it. that there's actually proof that he rose from the dead. And one of the proofs is exactly what he just said right there, come see. Come see the empty tomb. What I love about it is that the angel did not open the tomb so Jesus could get out. The tomb was open so that we could see in and see that Jesus is alive. Jesus wants to prove himself to you. The book of Acts, the very first chapter says that during 40 days after he suffered and died, rose again, he appeared to the apostles from time to time and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. The Bible even records how there was one time when there was a guy named Doubting Thomas. Everybody remember poor Doubting Thomas. He's got like a really bad reputation now. But he actually, Jesus came and he said, hey, put your, put your hand right here on my side. No, that's gross. Okay, well, then put your hands, put, put them right here in my hands. See, I was dead. Now I'm alive. They didn't hardly believe him. So he said, hand me some of that fish over there. I'll eat it. He cooked them breakfast one day. <laughs> to prove that he really was real and he was still the best cook around, I guess. I don't know. I mean, he's Jesus, so he kind of cheats. God knows how to cook, I'm assuming, right? But he constantly, over and over again, shows us he's real. If you're, uh, if you're with us, you know we're reading through the Bible right now, and if you'd like to read God's Word with us, we're reading one chapter at a time, and you can text RLC Bible to 94,000, and we're reading through the book of 2 Kings. And we're going to get through it in Jesus' name. It's going to be all right. But after 2 Kings, we're going to read uh, the book called Colossians. And one of the reasons why I love Colossians so much is the Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Paul because the, the, the small church in a place called Colossae was struggling with this heresy that was coming in that was debating about who Jesus was and what he was and why he came. And so inspired of the Holy Spirit, Paul writes to this church and he said, let me tell you exactly what you need to know about Jesus. And that is that I pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience you need and that you may be filled with joy. What is it about Jesus that fills us with joy? For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and he transferred us into the kingdom of himself, the dear son, and who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Because Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. And he existed before anything and was created and he is supreme over all creation. Who is Jesus? He is the king. He is the master. He is the creator of all things. And he did die, but three days later, he got up himself and he rose again and he's alive forevermore. If you wanna look inside your your message notes, uh, there were just too many to mention. And so there's a QR code there where I created a blog post where I just have dozens and dozens and dozens of proofs throughout history, proofs that prove to you that Jesus rose again. And there's even YouTube thing links and all that. Don't look at it right now, take a long time. But there's so many there. And what what do you want? You want proof that Jesus is alive? We have so many proofs that Jesus is alive. But I wanna give you my three favorite. They may not be yours, but the three things that helped me when I was struggling with my relationship with God, the three things that helped convince me that Jesus is alive. The first one is what we call the four biographies of Jesus' life. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All four of these either walked with Jesus or walked closely with those who walked with Jesus. And they all saw the life, the death, the resurrection, and then saw him after the fact. And then within 30 years of his resurrection, wrote the story about his life. And they weren't all sitting around the same campfire. 
They were sitting in different places, doing different things, and they all wrote about the life of Jesus, and they all go together, and it's amazing, and it's wonderful, and was within 30 years of his resurrection, to where some people go, 30 years? That's like a long time. But in the course of history, it is like snapping your fingers. Most things were nowhere near that close. As a matter of fact, how many has ever heard of Alexander the Great, right? We've heard of Alexander the Great. You've watched the movie, horrible movie, but what amazing, amazing thing that he did all this stuff. No one doubts Alexander's alive. No one doubts all the things that he did. It's considered to be very accurate. Did you know Alexander the Great? It was 300 years before the first biography was ever written by a guy named Diodorus. If you're looking for a baby name, Diodorus, okay? No one else is gonna have that name, just you, okay? That's all it's gonna be. But that's considered very, very close, 300 years. We have an embarrassment of riches that prove that people that knew Jesus said there was something amazing about this man and he was not man, but he was God. Let me show you. And he, they wrote it during the lifetime of the people that saw him. They could have discounted all of it, but they said, no, it's true, it's true. Here's another one and that is the empty tomb, the empty tomb. Here's my question. And this question has been asked for so many years. And that is, if Jesus didn't rise, where's his body? Where is it? There's three big objections to this. One is that they went to the wrong tomb. Really? You think the angel was like stopping by at Starbucks and he like got lost and, and he went over there. Oh my, it's empty. No, it's an angel. He knows where he's going, okay? He didn't get lost. They went to the right tomb. The second one is that the disciples might have stole his body. Really? Do you know where the disciples are at that moment? They are hiding. It was just the ladies. Just the ladies went to go check on the body of Jesus. The dudes are gone. They are hiding out. So you're telling me that these terrified, mostly fishermen are going to go against a detachment of Roman soldiers. They're going to kill all the Roman soldiers, hide all their bodies, not get injured at all themselves, then take the body and hide it. And you're never going to find it. That's hilarious. That didn't happen. The third one is, is that his enemies took the body. That's also not true because the moment they said he rose again, all they had to do is show the body and the case is closed and we wouldn't be Christians today. Where's the body? He's not there, you know why? Because he's alive forevermore. And some people would have you re realize because we, we haven't read the Bible and that is that we think that only these 11 dudes saw Jesus. Do you know that up to 500 people saw Jesus? For 40 days, he walked around and he showed himself to people and 500 different people all saw Jesus. And that's one of the things that's so amazing is my third one is that the changed lives of the disciples, I'm supposed to say changed lives of disciples. Ugh. <laughs> Typos, all right. The changed lives of the disciples. Do you know what's amazing? Is we know that they were terrified and they became ready to die for the gospel. Like I said, before the resurrected savior, they were hiding up in an upper room, terrified, and they sent the ladies. <laughs> Great job, guys. <laughs> well, they stayed hidden. But something happened in their life that was so powerful and so amazing that in Acts chapter two, Peter stood up in front of everybody, looked right at the people that had put Jesus to death, and he pointed his finger in their face, and he said, you put him to death, but he's alive, and he still wants you. That's boldness. <laughs> It had to be something that completely changed their lives. And according to history, all but one of the original 12 disciples were martyred, tortured, and killed for their faith. And all they had to do is to say that they, all made, they made it all up. And they said, I can't because I saw him and he's alive. So do to me what you want. Peter was crucified upside down. Matthew was torn limb from limb. So many of them were, were crucified upside down, crucified on an X-shaped cross. They were stabbed to death. All these things happened. And they said, but I can't deny what I saw. He's alive. And if none of that worked, my bonus one is this. Every single saved person in this room is my proof that Jesus is alive. Do you know why? Because of what happened in my life and because of what happened in yours. And then when we trusted in Jesus for our salvation, I can't explain it. All I can tell you is I was one way and now I'm another. And the king himself called it being born again that old things passed away, all things become new. And the joy of the resurrection is that joy overflows when I realize I know enough to choose Jesus. Do I have questions still? Yes. Do I have things I don't understand? Yes. But do I know enough to make a good decision? Absolutely. And no matter what's going on in my life, the resurrection gives me joy instead of fear because I know that Jesus is alive. 
And when I realize and remember that he is alive, I have the honor of being able to choose Jesus over my fear. The second thing that the resurrection helps us with is he helps us to realize that he is alive and Jesus is trustworthy. Jesus is trustworthy. The first time I asked you to do it quietly with, a little, with just, just, just a little bit of softness. This time I want you to have just a little bit of attitude. Throw a little sauce at them and say, now listen, Jesus is alive, so do not be afraid. Do not, no, I know, I said like a whole bunch of stuff. I just wanted you to say, don't be afraid, okay? I got you confused. So we're gonna try it again. Look at your neighbor, a little bit of sauce, a little, little bit of a fastball. I'm gonna say, don't be afraid. It was perfect. That was so good because well, he's trustworthy. That's why the Bible says early on Sunday morning, a new day was dawning. Mary and Mary and Mary and Mary and Mary all went out to visit the tomb. And then the angel spoke to the women. I love this. And he says, don't be afraid. He is risen from the dead just as he said what happened. With, just imagine just the slightest little bit of sarcasm. It's like, he did tell you, right? So now go and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember that I have told you this. And what I love about this is that the angel is saying, and, and I'm sure, I mean, we've, we've seen the movies and we always want to think of angels as like the sweetest little things ever. So let's, we can go ahead and be like, you know, like this, just as he told you he would, right? I see the slightest bit of sarcasm here. Listen, <laughs> Listen, Linda, listen. <laughs> he told you, he told you he was gonna come back and he did. And that's one of the things I love about Jesus is that Jesus keeps his word. Do you know that over and over and over again in the gospels, he would look at his disciples and he would say, guys, I'm gonna go to Jerusalem and they're gonna arrest me. They're gonna crucify me. But three days later, I'm gonna rise again. And you know what they would say? Wonder what he means by that. What do you think, John? I got no idea. What do you think, Matthew? I don't know. Maybe you'll say it again. And so we would. Later on, he's like, hey, guys, by the way, they're going to take me. When I get to Jerusalem, they're going to crucify me. But three days later, I'm going to rise again. What do you reckon? You reckon we're going to go to Jerusalem? Yes, we're going to go to Jerusalem over and over again. Finally, Jesus started telling them not just that he was going to be crucified and rise again. He started telling them about his after party. He started saying, listen, not only am I gonna die, not only am I gonna rise again, but I'm gonna see you guys after. I'm gonna tell you all the details. He said it like this. He said in a later place, he said, come on now. He said in a later place, there, there it is. On the way, Jesus told them, tonight, all of you will desert me, but after I am raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. What do you reckon he meant by that? Ugh, you know, it means I'm gonna rise again, I'm gonna go to Galilee to meet you there. That's what it means. But they didn't know. But what happened is, is every single detail that Jesus said he was going to do, he did. And the reason why I love that so much is it reminds me that the resurrection helps me realize that I don't have to have fear, but I can have joy. And not just in the big things of life, but Jesus doesn't miss a single detail of what he has promised all of us. If he's promised it, it will happen. Jesus doesn't do 99%, he does all of it. And so if he said something to you, every single detail he knows and he cares about. And Jesus is trustworthy. And can I tell you that every single Easter, every single Resurrection Sunday, I have an opportunity to experience. This gets more and more real for my life. Now I haven't experienced that many. I'm nowhere near as old as I look. So, but the few, I don't know why y'all smiling over here. Okay, all right, look. But I have experienced a few of them. And can I tell you, every single Resurrection Sunday, every single Easter, is just another reminder of the past 12 months and how faithful the Lord has been because he has been so trustworthy. That's exactly what Paul was saying. There, there's a time when he's writing to the church at Corinth and he's sharing his testimony. And you almost look at it as though he's telling bad news. But actually, if you look at it, and if you've been walking with Jesus for a while, you get what he's saying. Because the Bible says, it says, God has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. He now, we now have this shining light in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. And I love this. He says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. 
We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. We continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith that the psalmist had when he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. And we know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus. And that is why we never give up. What he's saying is, is man, I have been there and I have done that. I've experienced dark days. I've experienced good days. I've experienced everything in between. I've had times when people were with me. I've had times when I was alone. I had times I should have never gotten out of. But you know the one thing that never failed? Jesus. And because he has been with me, that is why I believe him. Because I've been there and I've done that and he's never failed. That's why I don't give up. Not because everything goes right, but because of whose hope I have my faith in. And can I tell you, that's the exact same story that I have. The reason why the Resurrection Sunday means so much to me is because he replaces my fear with joy. Because every 12 months, I look back and I go, Jesus, so much has happened. But the one thing that's never failed is that you are still trustworthy. And that's why joy overflows when I realize that I can trust Jesus. Joy overflows when I can trust him. Now that doesn't mean I'm always happy. It doesn't mean that everything always goes right. Joy is not happiness. Joy is the settled, confident assurance that Jesus will keep his word. The settled, confident hope that God is gonna do what he says he's going to do. And one of the things I love so much about Jesus is that he never leaves us and he never forsakes us. And every year is another reminder that he's still faithful and that he's still good. And can I tell you the great thing about the resurrection is that he replaces our fear for joy because we're able to realize that Jesus is alive. Also, we're able to realize that Jesus is trustworthy. And then here's one more. And that is that Jesus is here now that Jesus is here, right here, right now. Now, the first time I asked you to do it with just love and tenderness. Second time was just a little bit of sauce on it. This time I need you to get a little angry. Almost like they're not paying attention. I ain't look at your neighbor, don't touch them. No, okay, don't touch them. But look at them and be like, don't be afraid. I was a little terrifying to be honest with you. Some of y'all was mad. You got it out now? You good? All right, you good? All right. All right. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't let the enemy lie to you and tell you you have nothing to celebrate. Don't be afraid. Watch what happens. I love this so much. Jesus is here now. The Bible says early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, all the Marys went to visit the tomb. And the angel said, you're going to see him. Remember what I have told you. And I love this. The Bible says they were frightened but also filled with great joy. What if? What if it's true? So they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And I love this so much. As they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. I wonder how Jesus did that. You wonder, he's like, what's up guys? <laughs> and they almost came, in my mind, my imagination is that they almost walked past him. <laughs> like, what's up guys? Jesus. <laughs> like, what, what are you doing here? Did you not listen? He just said, remember what I told you. That's just the way my imagination works. It says, then they ran to him, grasped his feet and worshiped him. And then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Isn't that amazing? The first thing he said, I got you. I got this. It's gonna be okay. Jesus, is that really you? I mean, I know what the angel said, but I haven't had a chance to process it yet. Jesus, is that, could, let, me, let me grab, Jesus, I, I that really is you. I can touch your feet. That, you're alive. You really are alive. You really, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I know you've had fear. I know you didn't know what was going on. I know there's a whole lot more yet to have that, that's got to happen. But the one thing you never have to have any more of is don't be afraid anymore. Can I tell you what I love about the resurrection? Is it because of Jesus? The first thing he wants to say to you today is don't be afraid that it's okay. That doesn't mean situations are okay, but it means you're okay because he is alive. And what I, my prayer for you this Resurrection Sunday is this prayer right here. And that is that I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope that he has given to those he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. And I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. 
the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. Can I tell you, how many Easter's did I spend? I don't know that I heard about this Jesus. I grew up in church. My dad was a pastor. I heard the gospel all the time, especially on Easter. I would hear about Jesus who died on the cross Jesus who rose again, we would celebrate that, we would leave. And I don't mean this rude, and they probably said it a thousand times, but it never got on the inside of me. And that is, why? Why does that matter? I mean, praise the Lord. But why? Why does that make a difference? Why does it matter that Jesus rose again? What does that have to do with me? What can that do for me? And I didn't mean that as in selfishly. I just didn't know. And then finally, someone helped me make it make sense. And can I tell you, the closest I can get to understanding what that guy went through at the beginning of our message, when he, he walked into a room one way, thinking his life was over, and he walked out a different way, was when I finally understood the message of the gospel. And can I tell you, if there was ever a verse in the Bible that would describe the message of the gospel, it would be this. And that is, God's word says, God is so rich in mercy, and he loves us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. And one day when I was sitting in a service, in an evening church service, someone told me about the love of Jesus and it made sense to me for the first time. And I walked into that room with no hope, but I walked out never the same. October 26, 1996, I discovered what hope was. It was when I realized the reason why Jesus came to this earth, the reason why he was crucified, the reason why he rose again was so that he could tell me how much he loved me and how much he gave my, me life. But you know what made the biggest sense for me was when I made it personal. And so I want you to do me a favor. If you're taking analog notes, I know you've already wrote that down, but I want you to X out the word us and I want you to put your name there instead because that's God's message to you today. My name's Brandon. And so God's message today is, God is so rich in mercy. He loves Brandon so much. He loves Aaron so much. He loves Bruce so much. He loves Sarah. He loves Jamie. He loves Eric. He loves Barry so much in that even though we were dead because of our sins. Romans 5, 8 says, God had demonstrated his great love toward us in that while I was still a sinner, before I wanted to know him, before I wanted anything to do with him, he died and rose again for me. And he gave Brandon, he gave Keith, he gave Sarah, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. The reason why I celebrate Resurrection Sunday is not because everything is going right. It's not because I've got everything in life figured out. It's not because I don't have problems. We all got 99 problems. We just realize Jesus ain't one of them. And we realize the amazing hope that we have, that our God is so rich in mercy. If you're in here and you know Jesus, can I tell you something? He loves you so much. He's not mad at you. He's not offended at you. He's in love with you. You've never been more loved than you are right now. And if you're in here and you know Jesus, you know what else? He gave you life, the greatest miracle you could ever hope for. You've already received. You've gone from death to life. And if Jesus can wash away your sins, anything's possible. If you're in here and you don't know Jesus, can I tell you the exact same thing? God is so rich in mercy. He loves you so much. He knows everything you've done and he still loves you. He was there when that person did that thing to you that was terrible and it was horrible and he cried right alongside with you, but he hasn't changed his mind about you. He's still in love with you. He's still seeking after you. He still wants you to be part of his family and he wants you to pass from death to life. He wants you. He's never going to stop. He loves you so much that he will never give up on you. That's the message of the gospel, is that he loves you.
and he's here to give you life. And so let's take that spiritual survey together. If you wanna look inside your message notes, that's your connect card. On the back of that connect card is that spiritual survey. It's something we do every year and I love getting to do this together. It's just a, a way for us to, to celebrate or take a next step with the joy of resurrection. And what we ask you to everybody to do is to, it's just to celebrate by indicating where you are. Everybody in here is in one of these four places and it's on your connect card on the back. The first one is A, today I'm celebrating my relationship with Jesus Christ. And if that's you, can I tell you? Me too, man. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for what Jesus has done in our lives. And that, man, we've got another year of opportunity just to celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive. And in just a moment, the band's gonna lead us in a final worship song. And I just wanna encourage you when that happens, just to raise your hands and to worship God and say, thank you, Jesus, that you've taken me from fear to joy because you're alive and you're trustworthy and you're here with me even in this moment. Maybe that's not you, maybe you're B. Today, I'm committing my life to Jesus Christ. Can I tell you? That's so amazing. I'm already so proud of you. It's one thing to know about the love of God. And it's quite another to experience the love of God for yourself. And can I tell you, Jesus is waiting for you. He's in love with you. You've tried everything else. Why not come on home to Jesus? Inside your worship God on the back of your message notes is the prayer of salvation. We're gonna talk about that in just a moment. But as we worship the Lord, maybe your act of worship is to spiritually bend your knee to Jesus and say, Jesus, be my Savior and be my Lord. Maybe you're in here in your seat. Today, I would like to ask questions before committing my life to Christ. If that's you, thank you so much for being here. I always dreamed of being part of a church where you didn't have to check your brain at the door, but you could know the faith and the hope that you have in Christ Jesus. And you could ask questions and you could learn about who Jesus is. And if that's you, maybe your next step is during our time of worship. Maybe you wanna sneak out to our prayer table in the back and say, hey, I've got questions. Can you help me? I don't know what those questions are. There's answers. We can find them together so you can make the next right decision. And maybe you're in here and you're D. Can I tell you if you're D, I'm so glad you're here. Please have the courage and be honest. I never intend to follow Jesus. Let me tell you what we're not gonna do. We're not gonna add you to a mailing list. We're not gonna harass you. <laughs> We're not coming by your house. We're not, we're not gonna TP your house, nothing, nothing like that. All right, we're not gonna do any of that. I'll tell you what we are gonna do. We're gonna start praying for you. And one of my favorite things is, people have asked me before, Pastor, why do we put D on there? Does anyone ever mark D? Oh yeah, people have. But two times since we've done this, and I've got pictures of them, and anytime I feel discouraged, man, I pull these out. We've had times when we've had people either mark A or B, and at the bottom, they say, last year, I was a D. Can I tell you, Jesus is never gonna stop. He is gonna follow you to the ends of the earth and then further. He can travel further than you can. That's how much he loves you. Why not come to Jesus today? If you're here and you're A, in just a moment, we're gonna celebrate the Lord. If you're C, I want you to step out. When, when we start to worship, go ask your questions. Let's, let's know who we are in Christ. But if you're B, on the back of your, your notes is this prayer. It says this, dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross so that all my sins could be forgiven. I am thankful you rose again and are alive right now. I confess I am a sinner and need you. I repent of my sin. I confess you as my Savior and Lord. From this moment forward, I give you my life. You are my King. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. The reason why I want you to pray that is because I don't want anything to distract you Sometimes we can, we can try to repeat words after other people so quickly, we don't actually know what we're saying. We're, we're not signing up for a timeshare. We're giving our life to Jesus. And I'm, I'm not a salesman. I'm not here to convince you of anything. I'm a satisfied customer. I've seen what God has done in my life. That's why it's my greatest joy to share that hope with you. And if you're ready, Jesus wants to be your Lord today. Let's pray together right now. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy. Thank you, God, that you see us and that you know us. God, I'm so thankful for the opportunity you have given us to know you today. I'm thankful, Lord, for all those who mark A, that they're about to celebrate you, celebrate Easter, celebrate what you're doing. And God, we're so thankful for another year of your faithfulness. Lord, some of us have walked through deep, dark valleys, but we have seen that you are trustworthy. 
and that you have been with us all along the way. And so with joy, we celebrate that you are alive. Lord, for some of us that mark C or mark D, Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're dealing with our hearts. I pray that you will open our eyes to see you, open our eyes to see your goodness, to see that you're for us and that you're with us in more ways than we can imagine. And God, for all of those who marked B and they're about to take their next step in you, God, in advance, I celebrate that we can be born again in you. The best way to celebrate Easter is to follow you in having new life. We're so thankful for today. We're so thankful to be part of a spiritual family. Most importantly, Jesus, we're so thankful that you're a great savior, that you're alive, that you're trustworthy, and that you are here now in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And would you stand with me all over the house this morning? The band's gonna lead us in a final song of worship. It's your opportunity. If you marked A, it's the time to raise your hands and just celebrate the Lord. If you're gonna give your life to Christ, there's never been a greater moment than right now to give your life to Him. If you have questions, we'd love to talk to you about what that is. But whatever it is, let's celebrate the Lord together this morning.